Hello everybody, this is Johns Hopkins with Baltimore Heritage and we're here in my living room in Bolton Hill, welcome, with another of our five minute histories. And today we're gonna to go to Mount Vernon. Um, not Mount Vernon, George Washington's Mount Vernon in Virginia, but our own Baltimore Mount Vernon. And if you talk about our Mount Vernon, you have to start with a gentleman named John Eager Howard. Howard was a Revolutionary War hero. Um, he was awarded a medal from Congress for his bravery in the Battle of Calpins. Um, he was an aide to, aide to camp to General George Washington, but he didn't get his start in Mount Vernon. He got his start in Baltimore County in a place we now call the Green Spring Valley. His grandfather, Joshua Howard, had come over from uh, Ireland and settled there. He was one of the first settlers in the area. Um, and uh, John Eager Howard grew up there. John Eager Howard's father, Cornelius, also grew up there. Um, but when his father died, John did not get the family estate. His brother Cornelius II got the estate. In a wicked twist of history, Cornelius was a Tory. He sympathized with the British during the Revolutionary War as his brother was off um, fighting with General Washington. So John doesn't get the family estate, but John does get a parcel from his mother's side, the Eager family. So now we know how John gets his middle name. And, uh, and that parcel is about a mile north of Baltimore town, and it's called Belvedere, spelled with an I. John gets this and then soon uh, expands it greatly. In fact, he expands it uh, from basically where the Belvedere Hotel is today, the Jones Falls, a little bit further east, arcing all the way around to past Lexington Market. And in fact, Howard is the one who gave over a parcel to farmers so that they could start Lexington Market uh, way, way, way long ago. So uh, things are going well for Howard and his wife, Peggy Margaret Chu from Philadelphia. Um, but in 1815, Baltimoreans start construction or design of the Washington Monument. And when the folks downtown saw the tall tower that was to be built, they said, no way are you building that near me. Uh, the first strong wind and it's gonna fall over and take out my house or my tavern. So Howard gives over a parcel of land in what was called Howard's Woods for the construction of the monument. And it begins in 1815. Um, it's not completed until 1829. Unfortunately, Howard died two years before the completion. So while he got to see the construction going on, he never got to see the finished product. Um, upon his death, his family uh, inherits parcels of property. Howard had engaged the surveyor, Thomas Poppleton, uh, to survey his estate, laying out roads and squares. Um, and in fact, he had engaged Thomas Poppleton to survey much of West Baltimore. So the West Baltimore we know today with Franklin Square and Lafayette Square and Union Square, all of that was the Poppleton plan. So the first house to go on Mount Vernon Place uh, was Howard's son, Charles. Um, Charles incidentally married a woman named Phoebe Key, uh, the daughter of Francis Scott Key. Oh, say can you see and all of that. And in, Fran in fact, Francis, who I think his contemporary is called Frank, um, Father Frank died in the house uh, on Mount Vernon Place. The house is where today's United Methodist Church stands. They, uh, they raised the house to build the church. So Charles builds a house there in 1829 as the monument is getting completed. Um, and then not much happens until about 1850. In the 1850s, Mount Vernon takes off as the place to live if you're one of Baltimore's elites. And we've got the Walters family that lives there, the Walters Art Gallery eventually. And we've got the Garrett family, the president's plural of the B&O Railroad. Um, and we've got the Thomas family of banking fame. So if you were in uh, the one percenters of the day, that's where you wanted to live. Um, those folks engaged the uh, architect firm, the uh, Olmsted Brothers firm uh, from New York City's Central Park fame and whatnot uh, to lay out the four parks that we have today. Um, and they did that uh, very nicely. And that lasted until the 1920s. In the 1920s, excuse me, the 19, uh, 1917 actually, uh, World War I, Baltimore wanted to pay respect to the Marquis de Lafayette. Um, the gentleman who came over from France and helped America win the revolution. And uh, we built a statue of him and started in 1917, not completed for, I believe, eight or nine years, but we started in 1917. And we engaged the landscape architecture from Career and Hastings. And if you've ever been to the New York Public Library, New York City Public Library, um, that's the firm, that grand building. And we engaged them to uh, do some site design around the monument. And about 10 minutes later, we said, well, why don't you redo the squares as well? And so uh, they did. They took down the iron fence that had been around each of the four squares. They put in paths and formal plantings. 
um, and they put in a lot of marble. And the idea was that uh, everywhere you were in the park, your eye would be drawn to and then ultimately up the Washington Monument to pay respect to the, to the monument. Um, today, the uh, Career and Hastings design is, is still there. And in fact, the Mount Vernon Place Conservancy uh, restored its, uh, raised a number, a, a lot, a lot of money, and in 2015 restored, did a great restoration project on the Washington Monument, and is today is working on the, uh, the four squares. Um, I'm gonna end with one, uh, one story, and this is courtesy of a gentleman named Ed Pappenfus, a retired state archivist. And we'll put it, he's got a wonderful tribute to John Eager Howard online, and we'll put, we'll put a link to it if you want to read it. Um, but uh, what happened to the Belvedere House, the grand mansion estate that John Eager Howard built in the, in the 1790s? Well, it stayed in the family for a while, and by the middle of the 1800s, um, it had passed to another prominent family, the McKins. Um, but it's not there today, and ultimately its fate may have been sealed by none other than John Eager Howard himself. When he hired Poppleton to lay out streets for his estate, um, they had Calvert Street running north, but stopping at Chase Street. If you know where the Belvedere Hotel is today, um, just a block away from there. Um, and it stopped basically at the front yard of Howard's house, the Belvedere. Um, but the problem was if Baltimore was gonna expand, if Mount Vernon was gonna grow, and it was gonna grow northward, northward, it would have to grow along Calvert Street and the building couldn't be there. And ultimately in the 1870s, the fast growing row house community of Mount Vernon was expanding and it was expanding northward. Um, Calvert Street got extended and the building did come down. So that's why we don't have a Belvedere mansion, um, but we do have a Belvedere with an E, not an I, uh, a hotel, and maybe that'll be the subject of another five minute video. Thanks so much and we'll see you tomorrow.